guys, this is Red Rain. Uh, I'm back a little bit late this time, but uh, better late than never, I suppose, uh, with uh, the results for the most recent unit design challenge, uh, number 20. Uh, this time around, the challenge is to design a unit that is capable of dealing at least 10 damage on a single turn. Uh, there were a few people reminding me that uh, I omitted Antima Comet from example units. Uh, I didn't really do my research. I was kind of just uh, crapping this out when I wrote up the post. But uh, yeah, apologies. If you wanted to design a unit that was similar to Antima Comet and you forgot to because... I mean, that's not really how you should be thinking about approaching unit designs anyway. I think unit designs are generally preferable when they fill some sort of role that's, you know, kind of unique from the other units, but, uh, I did forget to list Antima Comet, and there was one guy who PM'd me, it was like, sounded so distraught about it, it was really funny. But, uh, anyways, without further ado, we have a lot of comments this time around. Uh, I'll count the submissions just for fun. I haven't gone through Discord yet, so there will probably be a bit of a pause in between Reddit and Discord for this video, because I'm going to be too lazy to, uh, you know, stop the recording and combine them together. But, uh, we're going to basically do the thing. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, deleted, 20, 21, 22, 22 top level Reddit submissions, and apparently a whole lot of discussion, so I imagine most of these, if not all of them, got plenty of feedback uh, well before this, but uh, I said I would keep doing these, so I'm going to uh, keep doing them, in case people want to know my thoughts. Pucci says, you feel bad for making a low effort submit for this one, it isn't really a reasonable or balanced unit. You should not feel bad for submitting. You know, any submission is better than no submission. Uh, might happen that I like it. <laughs> I've. Uh, I would wait to actually read the submission before saying it, but it's not like I'm going to be insulted by anything on this thread. Uh, I posted low effort submissions to uh, 404's design challenges all the time. A few that I thought a little more about, but, uh, you know, I mostly kind of was just like, eh, here's a fun thing where I can dump something every week, I might as well do that. Uh, so anyways, without further ado, first unit is Rampant Demon from Not Vi Moranax. That's a heavy cost. Uh, 20, 5 red and 2 green, supply 1, 7 health, fragile. This is going to be a really fun one to judge. Because there's like... Because all of them are have to do at least 10 attack. Uh, so they're all going to be like... There are going to be a lot of really big units that are difficult to kind of just eyeball with the the calculations. I'm going to be very loose on that. I'm not really going to be like, oh look, this unit's in balance. Next. I'm not going to do that for this one. I definitely have to be... I'm looking more for good designs uh, with a challenge like, you know, design 10, a unit that can deal 10 damage. Because uh, even the ones that are currently in the game, like Zamora, or the big units that are currently in the game, not Zamora can't do 10 damage, but Big units go through several iterations, like, Lunark's best way of balancing them is throw them in the game and see what happens, and then adjust the cost until it makes sense. So, I don't think it's really fair to say that designs are expected to be perfectly balanced for this one around. Uh, plus, I'm, I'm not good enough at estimating for some of these. Uh, so... Enough babbling. What is a Gwent player doing here? What's a Prismata player doing here? Shouldn't you be, like, playing the game instead of watching some guy ramble about Reddit submissions? I don't know, Mr. Guy. What am I doing here? <laughs> Nine Winsers underpowered make it eight? Yeah. Something like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, that was a good time. Although, to be fair, 
the unit power curve was higher back then. You can't play because your button broke? Oh, that's too bad. Anyways, uh, that was, I've already gotten thoroughly distracted. I'm curious how long I'll spend on this time around. Uh, 7 health fragile, 3 attack. So obviously terrible value for 3 attack. And the idea is you click 2 drones in a wall to gain 12 attack, or you eat 2 drones in a wall to gain 12 and exhaust 2. This demon has untold power, but things will be in ruin. Can't consume prompt walls. So that is a little bit of a weird UI thing, because, uh... I believe if the wall is prompt... With the way the UI is currently implemented, you can consume prompt walls. I don't actually know if there's a unit that consumes a prompt unit. There's nothing that, like, consumes force fields. But I believe that would be the intuitive way to, uh implement that. Uh, but obviously, since that's not in the game yet, uh, you could, we can we can go off of it can't consume prompt walls. So you know ahead of time whether the opponent can actually use it. So that means you would need a wall, which sometimes you have a wall around as an absorber. Um, you gain 12 attack. It's kind of a cool idea. Uh, for being that ridiculous of a cost, it's probably okay to have a unit that threatens to deal 15. The problem is, in two turns, like, it deals a lot of 15 damage. Like, this is basically 7.5 isochronuses if you want to get max value out of the click. And if you're not getting max value out of the click, uh, this unit seems relatively weak. It's just dealing 3 attack. And this adds 3 plus 12 when you click it. Uh, so... I don't think it's, like... I feel like this is kind of just giant unit that deals a lot of damage. Uh, I think when you boil this unit down, it's two isochronuses that you have to uh, pay 25 red, 2 green, uh, and a couple of drones and walls every two turns. Uh, for seven and a half isochronuses, and that's actually not—I would say that's not very good. Um, when you package, when you bundle that all together, that comes out to probably being about the price of seven isochronuses, um, and you have to pay like this ridiculous cost. Like a wall is a blue unit, and you're investing in triple animus and a conduit to get this unit. Are these homecoming leaks? Yeah, something like that. So, uh, I'm gonna say this is probably just clunky design. I don't think this unit would be played, but I'll, I'm not saying that, oh, it's too weak, it doesn't make sense uh, as a design. I think it's also just not my favorite design, just because uh, if you're using it at its best, it's just a giant isochronous. And there, I think you can do more with uh, with the challenge. I don't really have more to say. Uh, Alright, I have to mark that. So, next we have Kogito with Loki. 10 blue, blue, red, red. That's relatively cheap considering it can deal 10 damage because of the uh, challenge restriction. Um, it's 2 health. Start a turn, gain 10 attack. You can't build anything. Uh, click pay 10 attack to build units as normal. That's really interesting. That's actually okay. Uh, I am I am immediately. Uh, I'm not gonna say too much about that, but th this uh, this is just a really interesting concept. Which, as I stated earlier, I'm mostly looking for concepts on this one. I'm not really looking for like, you know, well thought out, perfectly balanced designs. Uh, just because I'm not expecting to find any of those with the ten attack restriction. Pretty much any unit that can deal 10 damage is going to require playtesting. So, I'm just going to upvote it and move on. I want to try to keep this as short as possible because I've had... I've been really bad at doing that in the previous ones. So we have a Holy Hand Grenade. Cost 3 and 3 volume. 
uh, one health, one supplies, an additional cost, sacrifice three forges, and Pooch thankfully says that it's 12 damage, because I was definitely going to count this wrong. <laughs> uh, it's a lazy resubmit for one of the old design threads. Well, it's not one of my old design threads, so uh, I haven't seen this one yet. It's a fair idea. Uh, sacrifice three tech buildings, pay three blue blue blue. blue. It's kind of just a fair unit. Uh, in sets where you have like Odin or Degrid, uh, this can kind of this can kind of be pretty broken. Um, that being said, like having a way to tech out a blue, there aren't really many units that do that right now. There's Drake and Grenade Mech, but this is like a really fast tech out of blue, and it's also not particularly efficient and it requires you to be on triple blue to actually tech out of so i think it is an interesting unit uh and you know it's a resubmit i don't really i'm not really too worried about resubmits if i catch you on a resubmit like if you submit the same unit to two threads twice in a row i might factor that in and be like uh this is just the same unit again that's kind of lame but for the most part you know, if you want to, if there's a unit that fits the challenge well, if you want to dig it up, that's fine with me. Uh, I like this one, uh, so we'll, we'll keep it in the running. Next, we have Solon Paran with a uh, Gaussite condenser, uh, five and two green, one health, fragile, four supply. So turn gain one health up to a maximum of fifteen. And it starts at 1. Click, sacrifice it, and gain an attack for each health this unit has. Um, it's kind of a cute idea until you realize that this unit is actually just pretty ridiculous. Like, you can buy 4 of these. This is basically, for 5 green green, you get an attacker that uh, ignores absorb. Uh... Which is a pretty good deal. Um, this is still better than drones and walls. And better than most uh, f forms of advanced soak. So the other problem with this unit is that uh, I don't think you would actually use Gaussite Condenser in the way that the uh, challenge sort of intends. I think you're normally going to sacrifice this unit well before you get to the 15 health. Uh, and it doesn't really, it doesn't really feel like a unit that, uh, is, like, the ch it doesn't really feel like it fits the integrity of the challenge. It's not like a big giant nuke or a big giant, you know, late game unit. I, I say late game unit, but like big, big unit that you can build around. Uh, so it doesn't quite feel like it fits to me. Um, next we have Charmander from... I always, mi I always mispronounce this one. Hepkikog. Hep Hep Hepkikob. Something like that. Um, so we have Charmander. Costs 10 RR. 1 supply. 2 health. Start a turn. Gain attack. Click. Pay 10 RRX. And sacrifice Charmander. Build Charmeleon. And then Charmeleon is... Okay, so it's basically, it basically just evolves. You pay more and more each time. You pay the uh, cost of the attacker, so you can either deal the damage or evolve it. Um, and eventually it evolves into Mega Charizard Y, which just deals a ridiculous amount of damage. So... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 damage. Uh, the concept is kind of cool. It feels like there could be a place for this type of mechanic in Prismata. Uh, of like a unit that uh, you pay to evolve. Uh, possibly even repeatedly. Uh, so I do like the idea. The problem with this unit is I think it's a little bit too blatantly overpowered. Um, for me to even really overlook it. 
Uh, like, this doesn't feel like a unit that Lunark would release into the game and then later uh, balance change. This feels like a unit that Lunark would think about printing and then realize that it's insanely broken and not print it. Because this is a built time one attacker, so you can, if you just evolve it straight in a row, which is probably the optimal way to use this because you get a huge jump in power each time. Uh, this is basically just build time for 15 attack uh, for 10 RR, which if you compare that to like Zamora, that's pretty ridiculous. Um, or even like the old savior. Like the old savior was a bad unit, but it wasn't like that crazy underpowered for what it costed. Oh, it's 10 RR for... Okay, good catch. It's uh, 10 RR four times. Okay, I uh, totally... Uh... I get that it does no damage until turn. Uh, it, deal it does 15 if you repeatedly evolve it. Uh, but for some reason, my mind just erased the 10 RR. Uh, and that is, a, that is a pretty big deal. Uh, because the first evolution is actually not a particularly great deal. You would more pay it to get to the next ones. Um, it still threatens on those turns, yes. I, 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 know, I, I, I now know what it does. I, I basically just... Uh, it's not necessarily OP if you have to invest 30 gold into it. 30 gold for... Well, it's 10, 10, then 10, then 10, which is actually much better than 30 gold. Uh, it's signif It costs significantly less than 30 gold. You can do the inflation math on that. And there's also the fact that you don't need as many drones in order to play Charmander. Um... The thing is, with a unit this good, it has 20 health. You could just play breachproof red with a unit like with a unit like this. Like this is basically just fire spinner. You buy a Charmander at some point, and then you keep putting you keep putting stuff into it until you have a Mega Charizard that just solos your opponent. Because it's not fragile. Your opponent actually needs 20 damage to kill it. Um. I'm not really going to critique the balance of this unit. The fact that it costs 10 RR makes it significantly more complicated. Um, so, the concept is cool, and I feel bad for being like, oh my gosh, it's so blatantly overpowered. What I would change for this design, uh, I think if you wanted to actually add it to the game, making a 20 HP non-fragile unit, obviously this is meant to be like a boss unit that evolves and keeps getting stronger, and I like the fact that the HP increases. There's no need for it to increase to 20 at the final level. Like, 10 HP is probably what the final the final Mega Charizard should have. Should probably be like 1, 3, 7, 10 or something like that. Because uh, this unit could definitely become a draw unit, and even if it doesn't become a draw unit, uh, it, it it would become like a breach proof unit that you're it's basically just an uninteractive unit it's basically you buy this unit your opponent kills everything else you own uh, and then it's basically just your opponent plays solitaire against a 15 attack monster uh, and if they're able to defend they slowly build up to 20 health and then kill you if they're not able to defend um, they they die uh, and I think that part could be more interesting. So, I think with these specifics, this unit would not play out well. And I'm probably going to downvote it later because of that. Uh, but the idea is really cool. So, I do have to give it props for that. Uh, next we have Gaussite Boulder from Seinfeld NL. Um, 13, 6 green, 1 supply, 10 health fragile. Prompt blocker, click, sacrifice, Gaussite boulder to gain X to the Y, um, with Y being the remaining health of the unit. I assume this is the notation that was used, that's used on a lot of other units, like, this is how much attack it is, because if this was like an X, yeah, no, uh, 
<laughs> that would be really funny if, uh... So, the first thing I notice with this unit is I see a lot of math. Uh, and this is probably pretty ugly notation to actually put on a Prismata unit. Uh, like, for a new player, this is going to be unintuitive. Uh, given that I still haven't figured out what this unit does after reading the text. Uh, and I've actually played the game. Uh... Construct a build time one gauss site. So basically, base. I do get what this unit does now. Um, it you buy it. It deals. It's a prompt blocker, so you can use it on defense if you want. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. More likely, you don't want to, uh, given the text. Although I guess you give it back to your opponent, so you probably do want to use this to block. Actually, uh, it's not a bad idea to use this to block. Um, and then it deals the damage, and then gives your opponent that much damage minus two, which again they can block with. X is a damage, yeah. I know X is a damage, it's not a very... Oh, Mr. Guy was asking what it was. Okay. Uh, some some just, some uh, confusions in the chat about what the unit does. Um, so, it's an interesting idea. Uh, I do have to give it that for sure. Uh, there's not really a unit that does something like that right now. Like, gives it to your opponent back and forth. I do feel like... 15 green, green, green. That's actually not particular. Like, uh, given how expensive it is... Like, that's reasonably efficient soak if you just need a 10 health defender, but it's not really, like, practical soak. Um, so you're not using it just as true soak, so you're losing absorb if you're defending on this, and if you're not defending on this, it basically just plays back and forth. Uh, I do kind of like that there are theoretically multiple ways that you could use this unit. Um, just in terms of how actually good it is... I guess the concern is this is a potentially a lot of damage, but I mean, you're if you're if you're using Gaussite Boulder for a ton of damage, you're giving your opponent a large Gaussite Boulder as well. This is actually kind of a tough unit to evaluate, and it is a cool idea. So I'm going to make it my uh, future problem. Uh, Next we have Helichaz with Devastator. Uh, costs 6 Steel Splitters, I assume. Uh, redundant with this line here. You could... But I guess it costs nothing besides 6 Steel Splitters, which is interesting. There's no unit like that right now. Um, it's 10 health. Build time 2, start a turn, gain 10 attack. So... And it's got 10 health. It's not a blocker anymore, so... You don't have to worry about it just absorbing for 9. Although, you'd probably rather... You would rather deal 10 damage than absorb for 9. I believe that's correct. Like, at that point, you do get a lot of extra defense tempo, but 10 attack is still... Like, when you, could, when you have the option to get wall absorb, that's still a pretty large jump. So even if this were a blocker, it would be an attacking unit. Which means maybe it would be cool for this unit to be a blocker. Although there is the risk of that being somewhat drawish. This is basically just trade in 6 steel splitters, lose one turn of them attacking, and then gain 4 more attack from them every turn after that. And the fact that it has no cost is, uh, I feel like makes this kind of just an obvious buy when you have the six steel splitters. I do get that the, what the unit's trying to go for is normally you wouldn't buy six steel splitters, and maybe the Devastator motivates you to buy six steel splitters so that you can build a giant Devastator. But I feel like this unit's just not that interesting because... It's not that great of an incentive to go for Steel Splitters. The Steel Splitters are still pretty inefficient. And by the time you actually get the Devastator, you just always want to buy this. Um, so, I feel like it's 
I, I feel like I'm not a big fan. Uh, so I'm just going to move on. It's not a terrible design by any means. Like, I feel like you could put this in the game and it would be okay. It's just kind of... Kind of... Eh. Pooch thinks a 1010 is big enough that you could hold it for good value. I think you could hold it for good value. I think it's somewhat close-ish. I don't remember, like, my Arca math and things like that. But, uh... Yeah, you could... I would say you definitely attack with it normally, but you could hold it. Uh, but the unit also doesn't have blocker, so that's just dairy crafting. Uh, and I don't think the unit has to have blocker. I, I'm not like, oh, this unit has doesn't have blocker, downvote, or anything like that. But, uh, it could have blocker. I think it would be kind of funny if it was like a Mega Steel Splitter that could block. Because this is just a vanilla unit, and I feel like that's kind of boring for, like... Oh, you're fusing six steel splitters together because it just doesn't do anything interesting. It's just a giant steel splitter. <laughs> um, next we have Minecraft Max, which is uh, which is submitting explosive slime. Eleven, three green, blue, and a red. One supply. Seventeen health. That's a lot of health for that cost. Uh. But it's not a blocker. Uh, Frontline, though. That's kind of interesting. Uh, start of turn. If Explosive Slime has more than one health, split Explosive Slime. Uh, else, auto click. The unit cannot be. Un okay, there's a bunch of text below this that helps explain this. Uh, the unit cannot be. Unclicked. So if it has one health, it's automatically clicking, which means you're sacrificing it uh, to gain an attack and construct a gauss charge. So. Okay, so basically this splits a bunch of times. It goes to 17, uh, then 9, then 5, then 3, then 2, then 1. And then 5 turns from now you potentially get, like, 32 Gauss Charges. Uh, but your opponent, once they split to smaller health slimes, can, like, kill a bunch of them. This is kind of... This is kind of a, an interesting design. Yeah, auto-click is just a sacrifice. I get that. Um, I don't think you need the auto-click text. I feel like the auto-click is just an extra detail because you're never not going to want to use the slime uh, once you uh, once you have it at one health. I guess theoretically you could deny absorb, but you're also getting a gauss charge for the next turn. Uh, furthermore... This is potentially 64 damage. That seems like that might be a lot of damage for the cost of explosive slime. Uh, so your opponent can trade, like... This is kind of just a weird unit. Um, I also don't think having 32 explosive slime tokens... that Well, it'll clog up the board, but I don't think it's, like, ridiculously crazy. Um... But it's just like, your opponent to actually kill, you know, 32 explosive slimes in uh, 5 turns is spending an awful lot of damage. And your opponent's basically just going to gun these down. I feel like it's... I feel like if this unit was played out, it wouldn't be particularly interesting. Like, it's kind of a weird unit, but it feels like you pretty much just let this keep splitting no matter what, because your opponent, unless you have one health slimes, your opponent doesn't really want to kill your explosive slimes, because your explosive slimes are just, uh, dealing, uh, like your explosive slime, like a two health explosive slime 
gains an attack and constructs a gauss charge which is worse than two health but also this unit can get like a ton of value so it feels like this is just kind of ridiculously good and it also feels like it's going to create a lot of clutter on the board so i feel like i'm not really following this design like it's kind of a neat idea just to have a unit that keeps splitting but if it, it feels like this is just too too overboard for me uh, with what it does. Killing two elf slimes would make sense. That's true because uh, the two elf slimes split into two one health slimes. Uh, I did forget about that. Um. I don't know. It's just. I don't want to call it a mess of a unit because it's a it's an interesting idea and I see where it's going and it's also expensive expensive to get started and takes a while to work but it the amount of damage this unit can do is just so ridiculous that it feels like it doesn't really belong in the game uh, next we have diamond GP with doom delayed Four green, eight attack, one supply spell. Uh, yeah, pay eight attack to purchase, doom delayed. Construct 12 gauss charges with build time two. So this is a unit where you pay four green to trade eight attack into 12 build time two gauss charges. So It's kind of like one and a half turns of inflation because you've got, uh, you assume you're buying this when the uh, attack isn't important immediately for killing your opponent's things. Uh, so your opponent doesn't have to defend this half a turn later when they would otherwise have no defense, but then they do have to defend it one and a half turns later. Uh, so because of that, as far as deals go, uh, if this just had no cost, this would probably be about fair, because by the time that you have 8 attack in Prismata, the inflation is going to be like somewhat high in most sets. Not in all sets, but uh, as a general rule. So I feel like if you have to pay 4 green... This unit's just not really going to get played. Like, there's not really... You can use it to deny absorb, uh, which is cool. I suppose that is the, pur the purpose of this unit. If this unit uh, denies absorb, and there's, like, a reasonably large absorber, this unit's really good. Uh, so, it's kind of neat, uh, and just trying to set that up. But it doesn't really feel like yet another Blood Rager type unit is like the most inspiring d design that this game needs. Uh, and I've seen some pretty cool ones already. So I don't think this one's... Uh, I'm not particularly in love with this one. Uh, this is a unit that you could print though. There's nothing like inherently wrong with this unit. Uh, next we have the Assimilator, which is Odin Costs. One supply, five health prompt blocker, uh, and start of turn, gain an attack for every three units that you've destroyed while a simulator was in play, it rounded down. So, you get an energy matrix, and then if you lose a lot of things, it attacks for a lot. The problem with this unit is that, uh, wow, that is insanely OP. Is that referring to Assimilator or Doom Delayed? Um, Mr. Guy. Uh, the thing with Assimilator is that, uh, 20 blue, blue, blue is really expensive for an energy matrix. Okay, Assimilator, I figured that's what you were, yeah, I was just making sure. Um, it is a very expensive unit, so there is that, uh, and the 5 health, but it is prompt, so it's a little easier to get on the board than Odin, and if you're playing, like, a really large game, 
you can just buy a bunch of engineers, and then they deal a damage and a health. Like, it's basically just permanent Antima Comet. Um, so this is definitely a very abusable unit. It's even more abusable with units like Barrier. It would change the priority of, uh... It would change the priority of, uh, Soak, which is actually pretty cool. I do kind of like that part of Assimilator. Uh, the part that I think doesn't fit in the game is just how insanely difficult it is for the other player to calculate defense. Like, the auto defense calculator, there's there, there's no way that there's a clean way to actually implement that with Assimilator. Uh, so what they would do is they would just use the star like they do with Apollo. But even with Apollo, they use like the attack count and then a star. Uh, and the breach indicator still works properly because Apollo is simple enough to do that for. And it would be a total mess to do, uh, to do that with a simulator. So I feel like this is a kind of a cool idea, but I'm not really sure it has a place in the game. It, it does have really interesting implications on, uh, how you would defend, uh... Like, the Assimilator plus Engineer spam is a really funny idea uh, that might work out um, pretty well. Uh, but it's also probably just too good, and also uh, the fact that it can deal, like, a really unpredictable amount of damage is definitely a con design-wise. So, not a big fan. Uh, next we have Runaway Train. Oh, to make to make a simulator even even more ridiculous, you can also just hold your drones to threaten to deal one damage, <laughs> which is really funny, uh, but also like even more ridiculous in terms of actually counting defense. Uh, next we have Runaway Train. Um, Runaway Train costs. Six blue blue and a steel splitter. Uh, for a five health blocker. Not prompt. Start a turn. Exhaust two all non exhausted steel splitters you control. Gain two attack for each unit exhausted in this manner. Um. I feel like. Okay, so for clarity, it means to deal three attack because I wasn't sure how the exhaust worked with clicking. Although I assume it, I think the clear, I think this post is correct. It would click the steel splitter first. Um, so, regardless, we will say it deals. Uh, Oh, apparently, I can't help but read. Oh, for every three units that you've destroyed while Assimilator was in play. I can't read. God damn it. <laughs> uh, regardless, it is, uh, as Chad's pointing out, like, this is kind of a violation in that it would actually influence how your opponent would uh, defend. Well, there are situations where you could defend less efficiently just so that you can lose really big defenders as the opponent uh, and take less damage. Which is interesting. There's nothing wrong with it being a, a Shalee violation. Um, that being said, this is just kind of a... I think this unit's just crazier than, uh, than Prismata really uh, wants it to be. I think this is probably just a little bit too dreamy. Uh, so anyways, moving back to this. So it's dealing three damage. So it's turning your steel splitters into, like, fast scorchillas, basically, that exhaust for two instead of exhausting three. Um, 
There's a bunch of text on trying to cost it, but I'll be the judge of that. Uh, costing you and block thought for over two turns for a non prompt matrix. So you're paying one attack in addition to this, so. This is actually a pretty difficult unit to cost uh, correctly. But that being said, this unit is definitely very aggressively costed. Uh, it is an absorber, so you get leeway there. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this unit's current cost. Uh, but you basically just have a steel splitter on the table, and then you get, you get a less good energy matrix, but you still get an energy matrix, and then you turn steel splitters into really efficient attackers. Uh, it's kind of like a seal splitter perilla. Uh, it's kind of an interesting unit. Like, I'm not sure whether I, uh, I'm not sure how much I love the design on this one, but it feels functional. It feels like, like, I think maybe the, uh, I feel like the click, uh, the start of turn ability, sorry, not the click ability. I feel like this is more convoluted than it would have to be, but I also can't really think of what you would make it to make it better. I think really, I, like your consume, what is it that I, for some reason I don't love this design, I can't really pick a finger, or point a finger at, uh, why. Consuming a steel splitter. So it's an upgrade to it. I guess it's because it's an upgrade to a steel splitter that doesn't attack. Uh, it's just like upgrading a steel splitter to an energy matrix type unit that then also like boosts your other steel splitters. Uh, feels pretty unflavorful. Uh, is kind of why this design feels awkward. Um, it's a little hard to, for me to like picture that without seeing it on a board, but it's just like, this unit feels like it's kind of just thrown out in a vacuum. Like, I think this unit's reasonable to print balance-wise, given that it's an absorber. It changes the value of Steel Splitter. Probably it makes Steel, Steel Splitter a bit too aggressively costed. Like, if you buy Runaway Train, which you buy very often just because it's an absorber, you just buy this unit in every set, and then you spam Steel Splitters. I think it would make for relatively boring games because of that. So, I'm going to downvote it. Uh, I'm a little bit behind on Twitch chat. Um, it's like half a Splitterilla with an ISO flavor. Yeah, that's how I interpreted it. For once, I got it right. I misspoke when I... Like, I said it's a Steel Splitter Perilla, but I knew it was half of a... Steel Splitter Perilla. I, I didn't mean that it literally gave you an extra attack per turn. So next we have Junk Mail with uh, Gaussite Singularity. Six and a green, one health, ten supply. Uh, that is very cheap for a unit that can potentially deal ten. So uh, that's definitely scary. Fragile, lifespan ten. Start a turn, gain one health, click sacrifice Gaussite Singularity, deal damage equal to its health. Uh, so I believe this is actually extremely similar, aside from the cost, to a unit that was posted up above, which is Gaussite Condenser. Um, another thing I forgot to point out about both Gaussite Condenser and now Gaussite Singularity is that they both do two damage immediately. So you're actually getting a bonus on what is basically a Thermite Cord attack per turn. Obviously ignoring the fact that both of these units eventually die. Uh, well, this one has a health cap, the other one dies. So if you don't use your Gaussite Singularity... I think I like the Gaussite Singularity idea for this design a little bit better. Uh, because you're not just... 
motivated to indefinitely let it grow unless your opponent offers a breach. Uh, you actually have to use it. And the lifespan being 10 as opposed to like 15 with the other unit being able to cap to 15 uh, feels like it fits the unit better. There's like almost a downside there, but I think 10 is probably still longer than I'd want it to be just because... The potential of a Thermite Cord damage per turn is uh, really scary. Uh, this year it's a little bit cheaper than the other one. I think that's fine. Like, it's only roughly a third of a gold difference uh, if you're estimating. It's a little easier to purchase um, because it doesn't cost two green. Uh, click Sacrifice, Gaslight, yeah. I know what it does, I don't know why I'm rereading it. The fact that it is so sing uh, so similar to another design that I downvoted makes me inclined to downvote it. I think this is closer to the right way to do this type of unit, but I think it's also just uh, not a particularly well-fitting design. So next we have LaFail. Uh, Mr. Guy saying that is just to pee. I would be inclined to agree. Uh, it is probably on the overpowered side, but I think it's also just... I think not. it's not so much OP as it is kind of a flawed concept. Like, a unit like that's going to vary a ton in every different set. Uh, and it's also just undermining Absorb uh, very directly. It's not like an indirect way to counter Absorb, like Blood Rager or something like that. Uh, and the game is built around Absorb working most of the time. So, yeah, I'm not a huge fan because of that. Uh, obviously, there there's Breach Proof and whatnot. Like, I'm not saying, oh, it counters Absorb immediately downvote, but it pretty much counters Absorb in every single set where it appears. It's not like Thermite Core or Blood Rager where you still, you know, buy Absorbers. Uh... It's, it's different because of that. Anyways, uh, LaFail Monopoly. Uh, four green, blue, blue, EE. -E. One supply, four health. That is very cheap for a unit that can deal ten. Uh, gain an attack for each of your blueprints with zero supply left. Oh, that's very flavorful. That's, uh... Consume a Blast Forge, gain 6. Huh. So this is basically just a flexible utility unit. That, uh... If you're able to buy things out really quickly... Can potentially deal a lot of damage. Uh, this... What I will say about Monopoly is that this unit is... This unit's value is heavily determined by the set. Which is really risky. Uh, you, it is ridiculously easy to empty out legendary blueprints, and also, it's not 6 threat, it's 6 gold, Mr. Guy. Uh, this unit would be insane if you could just convert a Blast Forge into 6 attack, but it's just a way to sell Blast Forges, which, if you're not taking advantage of the start of turn, the sell Blast Forge ability is definitely not worth buying Monopoly for. Uh, which I think makes this unit interesting. Uh, I, I definitely like this one. It is risky to print because you'll get the occasional set where this is just super degenerate. Um, there are a few other units that are really easy to empty, like Thermite Core, uh, even Oride Core. Oride Core costs a little more to empty because you rarely want four Oride Cores at least, but... You have a potential to get really cheap monopolies, but you do have to work for it in most cases. And it's not like an obviously overpowered unit. And it has two abilities that are both situational and interesting. So, I like the monopoly. Chrono also, yeah, people in chat are naming units that have really easy to empty supplies. Uh, so it's definitely a risk, but as I said earlier, like, 
I think the idea is interesting enough, and I think you could balance a unit so that it's not, like, ridiculously degenerate. Like, you'd have to balance it somewhat defensively. Uh, you'd have to balance it in a way such that Monopoly is, like, not very good in most sets. But I think it would still be kind of an interesting unit. Blast Forge ability isn't situational, it's profitable. Um, designed for you to empty the Blast Forge stack. Yes, the Blast Forge ability is profitable, but it's not nearly good enough on its own for buying Monopoly. Like, it's a pretty inefficient way to tech out of blue compared to other units like Drake and Grenade Mech that do that job. It's really inefficient. Uh, and it's so inefficient that you probably would rather just not tech out of blue. And it's also, uh, you also have 10 Blast Forges, which takes a while before you can empty those out. Pooch thinks it would be an okay event unit. I think it would be a much better event unit than, like, you know, to actually put in the game. I think that would be a better place for Monopoly, but I also think it wouldn't be that horrible to put in the game. Uh, but it definitely does have the event unit feel to it, just because supply is not normally a mechanic that the units interact with. Uh, so that would, it, an event... An event would be a great place to put a unit like that, just because it does something completely different that's, like, generally not allowed for units currently to do. So, I agree with the Poochie. It feels like an event unit, but it feels like a good event unit, and it feels like an okay unit as well. So, I gave it the upvote. Uh, next, we have Dark Ray with Variable Cannon. Uh, 14, 5 green, 17 health, fragile, start of turn, gain 3 attack, click, pay 3 health, and pay 3 attack for constructing 8 gauss charges with exhaust 2, and gain exhaust 2. So you're really paying 3 attack and then 3 attack the next turn to deal 8 attack the following turn. So it's kind of like an 11 damage Scorchilla, if you're spamming the click ability. Uh, which is, for 14... I mean, you also pay the health, so it's not an indefinite Scorchilla. But, by the time you use this thing 5 times, if you're using this unit as a Scorchilla, your opponent's going to be dead. This unit's, like, really strong, potentially. Um... I think using the click ability is slightly good inflation-wise, if my uh, eyeball math is correct. Um, ignoring the 3 health, which is pretty much irrelevant. Uh, so the way I see this unit is that in most cases, especially during the phase where you want to deny absorb, this is just 14 GG GGG for... 3.75 Scorchillas, which is a bigger bundle than Scorchilla. It's harder to buy, so it takes a little longer to get out. You don't get some of the early pressure of Scorchilla. Uh, but that is a good deal, and you would buy it. And it, I would say the main problem, potentially, with Variable Cannon is that it kind of builds its own strategy. It feels like... Uh, it feels like this unit doesn't really uh, need any support to work. It's just like you buy the variable cannon and you hopefully win the game because you get to a deny absorb while variable cannon's your only attacker. And then you just, like it feels like sort of a Winsor type unit, which I guess comparing it to Winsor... Variable Cannon's probably less strong than Winsor. I think that's... Because Winsor's so much cheaper. 5 green is a lot, and 14 gold is also a lot. Like, you do have to pay the drones when you actually fire, but you also get more damage. So it's kind of like a worse Winsor. I think it's not crazy strong. Like, this feels like a unit that could be printed. And the flexibility is nice, being able to, in the late game, just switch to it dealing attack. Um, 
it does kind of feel like it operates itself, but I changed my mind on this one a little bit because this cost is so uh, restrictive that it sort of does dictate your strategy a little bit. Like, this unit's not going to be very good if you're saving up 5 green to buy it, and then there's nothing else good in green. Like, you need to get it kind of quickly. So I think it's a fair design. I should probably have read the text. Okay. Yeah, it basically just... Ex it, it basically This is basically just Captain Obvious down here. Uh, basically just says everything I said. But yeah, I think it's interesting. Variable, oh, variable cannon has four supply. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna immediately download it because of that. It is hard enough to buy another variable cannon that, uh, I think it's kind of fair. But that is really dicey. I think variable cannon would be more interesting as a one supply unit because... If you're going variable cannon, the best unit to support variable cannon in pretty much every single set is variable cannon. Uh, and that makes for a relatively uninteresting attacker. I feel like if you have a unit with like kind of a restrictive cost, maybe make it a little cheaper to compensate for there only being one supply. Maybe if you make it like 13 and 5 green, or maybe even 14 and 4 green. Uh... But then you force you you force players to actually buy other units alongside it. I think that makes it much harder to use, like, effectively and probably more interesting. So we have Warmaster next with uh, Gauss Bomber. Uh, four, green, green, blue, blue, one health, build time three, stamina three. <laughs> Quick construct and make bomb, game exhaust two. Incoming mega bomb. Sacrifice and gain ten attack. So it could just be like ten build, it could be like, wait, so it builds I feel like this unit could be, like, the flavor is kind of cute, but this unit could literally just be build time 4, stamina 3, click, gain 10 attack, and exhaust 2, and this unit would do exactly the same thing. So I do feel like, I, I feel like even though, like, the giant bomb is kind of cute, like, it makes it feel a little bit more flavorful. This unit does feel a little bit over-designed because of that. It's basically just a high build time, nuke your opponent three times type of unit. I haven't actually done the math on whether it's good or not. This unit seems like it's good. This unit seems like it's probably really good. Um, like, I have to imagine this unit might just be overpowered especially because there's four supply you can just stack a bunch of gauss bombers and then at some point you nuke your opponent for 40 uh, and it's ridiculously cheap to do a gauss bomber rush so I, I, I'm not a big fan of this one uh, this feels like it would get really abused and it also feels like the design is maybe just a little bit overcomplicated for the sake of being overcomplicated. Like, this is one of the simpler submissions we've seen, but it feels like if you want to make a simple submission, you might as well, like, not have an add-on unit for it uh, and just simplify down the text. It does make it so that it's build time 3, stamina 3, which the same number here is nice. But you also have 4s. You could make this a 4. Build time 4. Like, it'd be fine. Is, isn't it just three Scorches with one more build time for nothing close to three times the cost? Uh, Poochie's asking. Um, it's, act it's better and worse than three Scorches because it, they eventually stop firing. 
but they also get exhaust too at some point. So like, Scorch's fire three six nine turns, whereas uh, Gauss Bomber fires four six eight. Three six nine is probably better than four six eight, so it's a tiny bit worse than three Scorches. Um, but Pooch's comparison definitely uh, illustrates why this unit is totally broken. <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. Uh, next we have uh, Arn Stowed, or SSP, or whatever people want to call him. The secret biotech robotics lab built base uh, built a coordinated node assault weapon, codename Red Centipede. Version 1.2. Damn, we have some serious flavor on this one. That's pretty hype. Due to heavy performance losses and armament, armament escalation, an efficient model was designed. Red Centipede. 25, 6 red, 1 supply, 6 segments. What does F1 mean? Um, gain one attack per segment. Gain one attack with more than four segments. So if it's like still whole, you gain one extra attack. <laughs> How come he never put flavor in Discord? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, but the the flavor is cool. Uh, I. I, I, I do approve of flavor. I'm not going to, like, automatically appoint a unit because of flavor, but it, it makes for fun reading. Uh, the flavor definitely has me uh, hyped on this one. Click pay three red, gain one attack per segment over two. So the way I'm interpreting that, over two means... Wait... There are two ways to interpret that. This could be gain one attack per segment divided by two, which means gain one attack for every two segments. Or it could be one attack per segment if you have more than three of the segments. And then a segment gains frontline per one for one turn. And I assume the segments each have one health, because it says F1. Fragile 1, maybe? Well, I don't know why a red unit would be fragile. So, this is a tough unit to evaluate. There are a lot of numbers. Uh, but it can do a lot of damage. Um, this does meet the requirement of being able to deal more than 10 damage. So, there is that. Um, this is probably, this is, a, this is a really tough unit to evaluate, because if the segments stay intact, this is just a really good but really expensive attacker, but I think because the segments, unless I'm missing a number here and the segments have more than one health, you would just always frontline a segment. It's not really a particularly interesting decision. You do have the option to just make this 25 and 27 and 6 red for a 7 for 7 attack per turn. And I think that's a fair cost to potentially not even being any good. Cuz uh unless there's a ton of red support, you're not going to get value out of more than like 1 to 2 animuses. And 27 gold is really hard to get together. Uh, so you could say this is costs like 33 and 4 red. Uh, and if it costs that much to get 7 attack, that's not even that efficient. It is efficient. Like, it's more efficient than base set. But given how, like, you would have to float a bunch of gold to ever buy this... And you're only investing in red. Like, it's it's a very impractical unit to buy. And I think if you somehow pay it off... If you somehow pull it off, it's because your opponent... 
did something really slow and let you buy it, and then just has enough econ and other stuff to kill the segments if you're using the segment ability, and just, like, kind of destroy you. Like, I don't really see Red Centipede outvaluing, like, a Lucina or something like that. I feel like it's kind of just... I'm not judging it based on cost alone, but I think it's too weak, and I also think it's... Uh, I also think there's maybe a bit much going on here. The flavor is great, and you to it totally feels like you could make a unit like this. I think if you scaled it down a little bit, I think if you made it cost less than 27 and 6 red, uh, ob obviously you did that to meet uh, the design re requirements, because if you didn't, ma if you made it cost less uh, than 27 and 6 red, and it's like attacking per turn, and it deals a bunch of damage, like, that unit's going to be insanely overpowered if it's cheaper. If it's capable of potentially dealing 10 damage, I think it's even 11 damage per turn, is how I'm interpreting this. Um, if you're using the click ability. Obviously it's less than that once uh, some of the segments turn front line and then die. Um... So, my advice for simplifying this down, this would obviously break the design challenge, but I think this is just not a design that's intended for the design challenge. Um, I just, I think that because of the design restriction that it has to deal 10 damage, this is just too big and clunky uh, for it to make sense in Prismata. Uh, but I think you could turn this into a good design uh, by just... Instead of making the segment frontline, I think you could s just say sacrifice a segment. And I think that would make this unit more interesting. Uh, because the segment turning frontline doesn't really increase the amount of decision making. Your opponent's always going to frontline the segment. Like paying one health to remove like an attack per turn and potentially more than that because of this click ability. And like if you can put them under four segments even more than that. Like that seems clunky to me. You could also just remove this line right here. Uh, make it gain one attack per segment, and then sacrifice segments to gain more attack. And then obviously you would have to scale down the cost uh, in order to accommodate for that. This actually, like, I'm not being facetious here. This really does feel like it could make for a decent unit. Uh, like, I, I see the potential in this design. It's just... It's just scaled too large. Uh... So, next we have... I should catch up with chat first. Whole segment thing is too complicated, just make it based off of health. You could do that too. The segment thing is more flavorful to it being like a giant centipede. I don't think the segments are too complicated, it's just like you have six of them. And it's a legendary unit, so there's no chance for that to uh, be totally broken by buying multiple. Like, I like the segments. I just think that there are too many lines. There are too many interactions with the segments. If it's just like it deals more damage, like it deals gain one attack per segment. This is a good design. Like this part, this line right here is good. It feels flavorful. Just like you can cut out a lot of the uh, more complicated stuff here. Um, that's my recommendation. Uh, so next we have Art Rizit with Omega Cannon. Uh, 7 blue blue, supply 1, build time 2, 2 health. Click pay all unspent blue. Um, for each paid blue, gain an attack and construct a barrier. Um, I assume that's blue and not a Blast Forge, yeah. So you're trading a blue for an attack and constructing a barrier. Um, that goes. That's a really efficient trade. I don't think you can do any sort of like infinite loop with. I don't think there's anything degenerate you can do with that because there's not a unit that converts attack to tech, to my knowledge. So there's nothing like ridiculous that that. I can't think of anything ridiculous that that click ability allows for. Chat will correct me if I'm wrong. 
but that is just ridiculously efficient. Uh, gain an attack and construct a barrier for a blue. Like, if you have one Blast Forge, and you have Omega Cannon, it costs two blue, so you buy the two Blast Forges, you buy the Omega Cannon, and you say that you sink the blue for the rest of the game because you totally would if this unit existed. You're paying 17 gold because of the two Blast Forges and then the 7 gold for the Omega Cannon. Uh, with a little bit of build time in there. Because uh, you buy Blast Forge and then you buy the Omega Cannon. Um, and then you just immediately get 2 attack and 2 barriers for 17 gold, which is already good. Oh wait, it has exhaust too. Okay. Okay, false alarm. False alarm. Uh, it blended in with, like, all of the, uh, with, with all of this stuff, uh, talking about the unit. Um, provides the same amount of attack and defense value, provokes players to longer games, my economy, and under attacks you, turn of attack, next turn you're over attacked. So this just says a bunch of stuff, this is all true-ish. Depending on the set, you're either really over teched or you can just sink the blue really easily if there's like Steel Forge or Pixie or something like that. Uh, which it's pointing out down here. It's clear that the design was uh, thought out given all that's written down here. Uh, long blue built defense. Unefficient inefficient uh, resource investment because of uh, yeah you need walls is what it's saying uh, except this is actually not true because it says pay all unspent blue uh, you could buy a wall and then just buy the remaining stuff like there's nothing forcing you to spend all of your blue Obviously, the ability is so good that you would pretty much just always spend all of your blue. Like, you get a free barrier. You're not worried about buying wall when you can get a free barrier with your blue. That's absolutely insane. Uh, and an attack. I feel like that's kind of what's just not that interesting to me about this unit. Is... It's basically a unit where... If there's not a good blue sink, it's just too slow to get going because it has exhaust too. And you're just going to be wasting a whole bunch of blue by buying a bunch of blast forges every other turn. And if there's a blue sink, it's just insanely overpowered because the ability is baseline very good even with just the two blast forges you used to buy it. And then if you have like steel forges and crap to actually... Uh, abuse the off turn of Omega Cannon. Uh, you're just getting good value on that turn, and then this unit is just a really efficient unit with no downside. Uh, that can be Like, with Steel Forge, this unit is absolutely busted. Like, this is an understatement that it has crazy synergy with Steel Forge. Like, Every set that has this unit in Omega Cannon and Steel Forge is an Omega Cannon and Steel Forge game. And I think that's probably a bit much. It is kind of a neat idea. It fills a role that's not currently in the game. But, uh... Yeah. First Omega is so important. That's kind of true as well. Um, that's a, that's a fair point, Mr. Guy. Although I don't think that totally ruins the unit. Because if your opponent gets the attack and the barriers first, you could wait a turn. That's actually kind of interesting. Like, there would be some mind games where you would try to deny the barriers with the, uh, with the Omega Cannon attacks. Uh, and it's quite likely you would wait longer than the two turns just to do that. So that is, that is a cool, uh, that is, that is a cool, uh, part of this design. It's an interesting unit. I'm, I'm starting to, uh, question my 
evaluation on it. It feels like something that maybe I'm writing off just because of how potentially broken this type of design can be. I'll leave it in just to just to humor it. But uh I imagine that's likely all I'll be doing. Like it's I I, I would say this is uh yeah. This is definitely a fair design. More likely than mind games is really sharp openings or one omega fails spectacularly and the half turn later one crushes. Yeah, possible. Definitely possible. Uh, next we have Skalarm with Tidal Wave, 14 blue blue, 1 supply, 10 health, fragile prompt blocker. Start a turn, sacrifice Tidal Wave, gain attack equal to its health. Um... Huge under cost at block of pressure that you may not want to buy. Two waves cancel each other out. So initiating a wave trade is bad on paper unless it has tactical or defensive value. Good for soak, countering threat, or threatening to blow up a rush. So 14 blue blue for 10 health is really good. It's so good that even though it's fragile, you would maybe consider buying it just to uh, soak on, even if you're not able to uh, absorb with it. I don't think it's quite that good, but it's pretty good. And then because you can, you can also just sacrifice it and gain an attack equal to its health. So this is, like, how good is that in terms of gout? This feels like it's just, like, I mean, because it's a blue unit, you can actually, Mr. Guy pointing out that it's a blue-blue fragile unit, that does, like, that does break the color chart, that is true. Uh, getting a little hazy for me to see that kind of stuff, just because I go through the design so quickly. But yeah, that, that is one problem with this design. The other problem is it feels like you just spam tidal waves at some point. Like, 14 blue blue for 10 gauss charges is... Like, you have to factor in a half turn because your opponent has buys the defense a half turn. But that's, like, that's still, that's still pretty good. I think at some point you just get a couple attackers and then spam tidal waves. Um... And it's true that the tidal wave blocks the tidal wave. But it's just like... Eh. Oh, spam that one supply unit. Right. <laughs> the something... The reason for something not currently existing is an implied that it should to be that it shouldn't exist. Color pie is for the losers. I somewhat agree. I think color pie color pie isn't totally for losers. I'm not gonna like immediately write it off because it's a fragile blue unit. Uh, but it is part of the game. It would I would I would prefer it have you know green. It feels like it wouldn't be that difficult to implement into this type of unit if it being fragile is such a core part of its mechanic, which it is. Gameplay supported color pie makes sense. Yeah. Um, this unit just feels like... Like you could print it. It's just kind of like a giant thing that makes defense and also threatens a ridiculous amount. Like, I think this unit's kind of just not that interesting. And you just always buy it at some point because it's really good. 
So, I'm not in love with it. It's not the, it's definitely not the worst design by any means, but I I'm not rushing to see it in the game or anything like that. Gauslight Scar Cannon. 12, 3 green, 2 blue, supply 1, 12 fragile health, build time 2, start a turn, gain 3 attack. Make sure I understand all that. Sure. Click, pay, add in green, and consume a conduit to gain 7 attack. Construct 7 gauss charges with build time 2, and construct 7 gauss charges with build time 2 for your opponent. Exhaust 2. So you wouldn't gain the 3 attack, and you'd be gaining a different, uh, for the next turn if you click it, but you'll be gaining the first wave of gauss charges, and you also get another wave of gauss charges. So, once again, the click ability... Well, okay, you have to pay 7 green. 7 green's a fair bit. You're paying 7 green and the 3 attack for the next turn, really. Uh, which... Is a fair price. Um... In order to gain, like... I think the click ability, if you can afford it, is usually good. But it's not, like, that critical but it's also a bad unit if you're not using the click ability <laughs> is my plan to be an artifact pro like arca no nah, dude artifact is gonna blow so hard uh i can't i can't say anything but uh I may or may not have, uh, yeah. Gwent blows so hard. Gwent doesn't blow as hard as it used to. Gwent's actually gotten better, believe it or not. I, I should not ramble, I'm, I'm currently recording. But, uh... Oh crap, was I not recording? Hmm. Did I just notice that I wasn't recording? Or am I still recording? This will be really funny if I'm still recording. I'm gonna just trust that I was recording. Because at this point, there's no saving it. I'm not familiar with uh, the Streamlabs OBS layout and how it looks yet. So... Don't worry, all the important people are here. Yeah, that, 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 that pretty much sums it up, honestly. Um, I want to say this design is actually slightly underpowered. Because you have to actually pay the green to threaten. Oh, no, wait. This is build time two, and then... Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, you actually just get to threaten seven damage. That's kind of good. Everyone who's gonna watch it already has, and then some. That's 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 mostly true. Not everyone who uh, requested this is online at this time, but uh, for the most part, I would say that's true. Uh, it is, you know, kind of long and like I certainly wouldn't watch it if someone else was doing it. I'm just doing it because I can. Uh, so, yeah, 12 for, like, 3 attack and threatening 7 damage worth of Drake. It is both time 2, it's 12 green, 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 blue, blue. I don't think that's ridiculously overpowered. I think it costs enough that it's, and you have to save up 7 green to actually use it. I think this is actually a fair unit. 
I think it's kind of an interesting unit. It's a little bit tough to optimize, I would say. Um, it's not my favorite unit ever. Like, it's kind of just an attacker, but it's, it's, a, it's a fairly interesting attacker. It's one of the better ones I've seen. This one's deleted. Kind of curious. Okay, more children. Whatever. We're not going to bother with that. Mess message for everyone. The unit pricing spreadsheet is wrong about several things. I was not seriously using the unit sp spreadsheet. Uh, I was I was I used that like once or twice for show because uh, for fun. But uh, I did notice this as well. I was a little bit uh, skeptical of that. Uh, attack value depends on. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff, like. I, I think this is kind of nitpicking. First of all, this is not a unit, so I shouldn't even be spending time on this. Uh, but... The... The spreadsheet was made for just quick estimation. It wasn't made to be perfect. But I guess it, it, is, it is important to... I'm just going to move on. That's completely irrelevant. Anyways, Sinoja with the factory. Eight blue blue, supply one, four health, build time two, lifespan 15. Whenever I see lifespan 15, I immediately get skeptical. Because that seems like a longer lifespan than any unit should ever need for design reasons. Because what happens 16 turns after when you buy a unit is generally irrelevant. So start of turn, constructed drone for your opponent. Okay, so I guess the theory is just you could potentially give your opponent infinite drones. So this is meant to be like a pretty much irrelevant lifespan. Um, which is fair. Um, And then click, gain 10 attack, construct a poly wall and two drones for your opponent. You give a poly wall to your opponent, okay. Um, I don't believe this breaks SDR either. I don't see why it would. Seems like it's SDR friendly enough to me. The problem I see with this unit is that the polywall pretty much never gets abused. It's ridiculously hard to abuse the polywall. Like, you're on blue. Most of the good absorb denial units are like red or red blue or like weird techs. Uh, so, I pretty much see this unit as every single turn gain four attack and construct three drones for your opponent. Uh, and three drones are capable of, so th three drones are worth, like, three drones are worth more than four attack per turn, right? Like, three drones are, am I crazy? Well, not worth more than four, like, Giving your opponent drones per turn is really scary. I'm pretty sure this unit is just bad. Yeah, this unit is definite. Oh, and it's build time too. Yeah, this unit is painfully bad. It is definitely underpowered. Uh, also, design wise. Um, I don't think it breaks us. This is actually not true. Uh, well, 
you choose to buy the factory, so I guess it's technically true, but that doesn't break SDR, which again, this is not like an N this is not an SDR enforcing contest. I'm not too worried about SDR, but uh, constructing a drone for your opponent automatically when the unit does nothing just feels like kind of bad design, like punishing you for even buying the unit. You might as well just make it click gain 10 attack, construct a polywall and three drones for your opponent. It would be functionally almost exactly the same unit, except you would at least have the option to not attack and not give your opponent the drones. And that would make it slightly more interesting, because as is, if you're already paying your opponent one drone automatically, just for this unit existing, you're pretty much always just going to hit the button. Because four attack is better than giving your opponent two drones. Uh, compared to giving it your, your opponent three drones, though, this unit's like mostly a wash. And it costs quite a bit. Like, this unit's just not good. Because it's a prompt poly... Well... Is the polywall prompt? I assume the polywall is prompt. I don't know. It's a weird design to me. I downloaded it. I'm not going to go into detail on it. It just doesn't seem like... Meh. Idea of attacking and giving drones to your opponent's an interesting nugget. I agree. I don't think it's entirely a problem with the design. Aside from the fact that it just automatically gives your opponent. I think that part of the... A drone. I think that part of the design is kind of gross. But, uh, you just arrived, what's this, reviewing a design thread? Yep, we're reviewing the uh, design challenge that's pinned to the top of Reddit right now. Uh, it's long overdue. I uh, waited an extra week on this one for no real reason at all. Uh, so, I usually record these and make a video out of them, and I started streaming them just because I could. Uh, and this is the final one for Reddit, and we're going to turn off the video after this because I haven't compiled Discord yet. Uh, so, we'll leave people in suspense as to who actually won. But, uh, hello Chaz with Hit It Very Hard, Raid Leader from uh, everyone's favorite card game. <laughs> 10 green green blue blue red red, 1 supply, 4 health. Double your attack for this turn. Struck three, one, three whelps with front line for your opponent. Click, consume three drones, conduit in the blast forge to destroy three enemy whelps. I take it one, three whelps are, yeah, exactly what they sound like. That's just phrased this way for like Hearthstone flavor. Um, even though it's not really Hearthstone flavor because Raid Leader doesn't have anything to do with whelps. Uh, so... Double your attack and you give your opponent three attack, but it also has front line. The front line's not particularly efficient, it's like killing steel splitters, but it's kinda good and you can potentially deny it. Or you can use the click. If you use the click, the click is probably giving up more than 313 three whelps are worth. But you can sync tech using it because it costs 10 green, green, blue, blue, red, red. It's kind of just like a giant unit that potentially doubles attack. Uh, which is. It's kind of interesting. I feel like you wouldn't buy this unit very often, but in like a really big game, it's potentially just broken. I feel like most, of, I feel like this unit's just, if you don't want it to be insanely broken, you pretty much have to balance it so that it's like base plus seven in the vast majority of sets. And I feel like that's kind of boring. 
I feel like this unit's about appropriately priced so that it does that. But it's just like, eh. Do you really want a unit that doubles attack? Per like, I don't think... I don't think anyone's crying because there's not a unit in the game that doesn't have this line of text. I think it's just like super snowball-y and you have to make it so that it's super hard to set up or else it's not that interesting. I don't know. It, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's kind of a cute design. But, uh... I'm going with there's there are actually there is one thing I'm forgetting which is that the student combos ridiculously with Windsor. Uh so there's that as well. Like most most sets this unit's useless. The two places where this unit could shine is just where you have such a big absorber that you actually get enough shit to buy uh where you could by raid leader, or you get some ridiculous burst combo with Windsor and you just cheese your opponent out of the game. So, because of the Windsor interaction, uh, that has definitely sold me to downvote it. We don't really need any uh, 30 damage, like 2 unit, 10 drone, like relatively low tech combos. Like, this only takes one more green than Windsor, and you're already buying an Animus. So, this is basically just made to be used with Windsor. So, that is, I mean, yeah, blue is a downvote. Uh, I should downvote this because it's not a unit. But, it's in contest mode, so the score is hidden anyway. So, who really cares? I certainly don't. Um, the downvote upvote is just the easiest way to mark submissions. So, I could go through the remaining Reddit ones. Um, or the, not the Reddit, yeah, I could go through the remaining Reddit ones and pick a top three and then see if any of the Discord submissions compete with them. Uh, I might even be lazy and just not take Discord submissions this time around, but I'm not, I'm not going to be that mean. People waited long enough. Uh, so, Loki is cool. Holy Hand Grenade is kind of neat. I feel like I wasn't entirely sold on it. Uh, but it, it is a cool idea. It's, it's kind of broken with, you know, like, Odin, maybe D-Grid. Like, there are sets where this unit's totally broken. There are a lot of sets where it just doesn't do anything. But it's kind of a neat way to sync fast. It feels like there should be something it does that, like, sacrifices multiple tech buildings. Like, I feel like you could make a unit that does something kind of like this one. It's just, it shouldn't be this particular one. Um, this one had a lot of problems because of this. It was a cool idea, so we upvoted it. Like, this is a really cool idea, the evolution mechanic. But, yeah, it can totally break. Uh... Gaussite Boulder, kind of cute, but really expensive for what it does going back and forth, and it's like, also a lot of, eh, I'm just not in love with it. Uh, so we have four or five still upvoted. Let's just remove two at random. I'm not that much of a memer. Omega Cannon and the Scar Cannon. Um, this one we upvoted out of sympathy, and it was kind of a really risky print. Uh, and then we have Variable Cannon, which had the supply issue, and it's... I feel like Variable Cannon and uh, Scar Cannon kind of similar. I think Scar Cannon's probably the safer one to print, and also a little bit more interesting. I'm pretty sure you just use Variable Cannon as Scorchilla until the late game, and then you just smork with it. Uh, so I'm not in love with it. Monopoly, I guess, is also just like the, an event unit, which is a little risky. I'll look through the Discord submissions and see if I see more convincing ones. 
My guess is that my favorite one out of the ones submitted is probably Loki. I haven't actually thought about, uh, you know, how, how I would evaluate this unit. Uh, like how good it would be. But I think it's interesting. It's hard to use. It's definitely not like a super degenerate rush unit. I don't think you can get it out fast enough that it just wins the game. Uh, so, I'm calling it fair. Uh, and you could also just readjust the price. I just think it's a cool design. I was like, whoa, I've never seen that before. Upvote. Gave it about five seconds in the, but yeah. Uh, thanks for sticking around, guys. I'm going to take a break uh, before I look through the remaining ones and hopefully post the thread uh so yeah thanks for watching and take care